A day which often symbolizes the end of the summer and the beginning of the march into winter. A stark reminder as the temperature shifts from warm to unbearably cold. But nevertheless, the soccer beat marches on, and tonight we have another contest as Simley travels to North St. Paul to take on the Polars. Alongside Allison Vogt, I'm Alex Westhead. And Allison, like we said last week, between the two teams that were Tartan and North South St. Paul, here tonight at North, another great reminder of how lucky we are to be able to be back here broadcasting games once again. Yeah, of course, it's always great when you can, you know, kind of have to get used to a new normal and still be able to broadcast some sports. And, of course, the two teams tonight, North and Simley, both teams near the top of the table last season in 2019 in the Metro East Conference. You see there for the Polars, their offense has been prolific, and they haven't been yielding many goals so far in the season. Now, that's pretty incredible. Only allowing one goal per game. Um, you know, that's, like, just a recipe for success right there. Um, Simley's going to have to come on and make sure they get a lot of shots on goal. Speaking of Simley, again, a little bit different, a little bit more goals given up this season coming off a section championship out of 3A last season where they fell to the current number one ranked team in Class A, that being the Academy of Holy Angels Stars. So an excellent matchup between here as we take a look at North High School and Polar Field, again in the shadow of the snowman just off of Highway 36. And right here in downtown North St. Paul. A beautiful night, a little cold night here. 50 degrees will be the game time temperature here at North High School. And again, in your playing experience with St. Cloud Cathedral, how do soccer players adjust to the weather, especially when it gets cold on days like today? Well, we're just Minnesotans, right? Uh, you get used to the cold weather, you know, you make sure you keep on pants, sweatshirt, make sure to move your muscles every once in a while when you're on the bench, if you're not out on the field. Um, you know, it's all about keeping moving. And of course, the snowman certainly happy as the temperatures begin to cool. We have a couple of players to watch for you tonight. We'll start with the Simley Spartans and the senior midfielder number nine, Andrew Jeffers, a season ago for the Spartans. Five goals, seven assists for the Spartan team that finished third out of the Metro East Conference. Again, the number two seed in the section 3A playoffs for the North St. Paul Polars meanwhile on the other side. They were 8-6-1, the number 5 seed out of Section 4 AA, and fell to the number 4 seed Stillwater 2-1 in the Section Quarter Finals. As the starting lineups are being introduced here at North High School. Again, the Simley Spartans and North St. Paul Polars playing each other once a season as they do every season. Last year it was a 3-2 victory for the Spartans down in Invergrove Heights uh, by again a 5 Final of three to two over the last 10 matchups between these two teams. They have been overwhelmingly in favor of North seven to three in their last contests as the North High Polars have won five of the last, or I'm sorry, four of the last five dating back to 2015. Again, teams only play normally once per season with the playoff schedule uh, not included in that metric. Again, you see there, North has been very strong defensively, only yielding as many as two goals in their last four victories against this Simley Spartan side. And again, you take a look there at the North High Polar head coach, Dan Torres. And again, you admire the social distancing that the students on the bench are doing. Again, there are a couple of different rules that have been made to high school soccer this year as a result of the current health situation. And we'll take a look at some of those when we get a chance to do so. As the goaltender being announced, it'll be Jose Alamila, the sophomore goaltender who will start tonight for the North High Polars. Meanwhile, on the other side, don't see a goaltender out there yet or anyone. 
clearly distinguishing themselves. But we'll take a look again at the rules. No substitutions on free kicks. Substitutions must maintain social distancing while they were doing that. Both teams in the girls' game did an excellent job. The running time rule has changed. It's no longer six. It's now five goals for running time. Of course, it only really applies on goals at any point during the second half. And they've also eliminated overtime for regular season games. And unfortunately, the post-game protocol of shaking hands has been done away with here for the duration of this season. As Allison so wonderfully pointed out, it's the senior captain for the Simley Spartans, number one, Ben Hatcher, who wears gray for the Simley Spartans in net, who will get the start for Simley under head coach Anthony Keller out of the Metro East Conference. Again, we want to say hello to all those watching on Town Square Television in the South Metro, joining us through this feed tonight for an excellent fixture between two Metro East rivals here tonight. To start the opening half, it'll be the Polars who will move right to left across your television screen. The Simley Spartans, meanwhile, will move left to right. As the lead official counts the number of players on the field to ensure that there, yes, are indeed 11 currently on the, pol on the Polar side wearing their home red, mostly red and black torso with black arms. Meanwhile, the Simley Spartans decked in white except for the goaltender gray and a plethora of neon orange and yellow around him. As it'll be Kieran O'Keefe, the senior attacker, to start play once the official has given his directive. And that's exactly what he'll do. He'll kick it back, and we're underway here at North High School. Chance now for Arturo Mayo Balbuena, who had it here going back to start. Jonathan Vargas kicks it across to the far side. Intercepted pass here for the Spartans. They try to send it through on a through ball, but no chance there as Jose Alamia able to make the save. And he'll make an early attempt to play the ball up the pitch. And we certainly wonder if the North High Polars are going to try to push the pace here as much as they can in the early going. Ball goes over the head, out of bounds of Aiden Lee, senior midfielder. And it will be a simile throw onto the far sideline. Both teams really going with some pace here. An excellent kick out of bounds that time by Abbas Shear as it goes out of bounds. Again, Highway 36 is in play. I know it's been a while since we've done some soccer from North High School, but Highway 36 is in play. So. If for whatever reason you're driving and watching at the same time, watch out. Soccer ball might be headed your way. Will be throw coming on the far sideline for Simley. Here inside the second minute of play. Going here on the far side. So try to work it back to the center. An excellent couple of challenges there by the Polders. Delay the Spartans temporarily before it can go back out to the far side where Aiden Lee has it again. Trying to send it back further. Nice intercept that time by Andrew Jeffers, another one of the captains for the Simley Spartans. As the Polars now try to take it onto the far sideline. Aiden Lee working through traffic, trying to get around the back line of the Simley defense. Unable to do so, though, as it will go out of bounds. And it will be a polar throw as it went off one of the back line of the Simley Spartans. Throw in here has gotten too quickly by Lee. They'll try to work back in front as O'Keefe tried to center in front, looking for the streaking Gail Lopez. But instead, the goaltender for the Spartans, Ben Hatcher, able to get to it. And the Spartans will come back the other way. Here under the near side, Sam Sheffley sends it back into the middle of the pitch, looking for Mitch Barrowman. Back to the goaltender again for Ben Hatcher. Hatcher onto the far side. They'll try to put it back out in front here. Ryan Ekstrom onto that far wing as they try to work back out through center ahead up to the striker Tate Engelson as the ball goes back onto the far sideline. Excellent move to cut it back, but he lost the handle on it, and the Polars will try to work, return the play. Here under the near side, Gail Lopez. Lopez trying to work through traffic. Excellent ball handling skills here as it comes onto the near side for Ame uh, Emiliano Esquivel. Esquivel taken out by two players as the ball goes here into the possession of the Spartans right on the out-of-bounds area. It's the yellow line on the near side, as you'll be able to take a look and see there. Balboina. Try to send the ball on, but it'll be gotten to first by Hatcher, who fields it inside the 18, and immediately you recognize just how well of moving the ball this North High team has been doing so far. They've done a really good job of moving the ball. They've had some good one touches, and Simley have noticed the same thing. They've been doing a great job of using support and passing the ball, you know, back to their defense or their midfield and passing it back up to their forwards. Shire's pass up ahead, looking for the foot of Lee is no good, but it'll be a throw up coming here for North High. Can be taken here now by Esquivel. Esquivel on the far side looking for Lee. It'll be another North High throw. Again, you certainly commend the players on both benches for spreading out, practicing social, social distancing. 
The North High Polars have been back at school since August 31st, so certainly a lot of time and practice for that, which has certainly translated well here onto the soccer field. Barrera will cut it back here. One of the captains for North High, they wear the orange armband around their arm to uh, designate the captaincy. Back in front here again for Barrera. Barrera, long pass, looking through ball up ahead for Kieran O'Keefe, but it goes back to the back line for Simley. And out of bounds, Zach Painter will have to send it to give the back line a chance to reset. Love well, seeing how aggressive the Simley goaltender is. Throw up coming. Good taken here further now by Escavel as they'll play tag in the corner. Cross out in front, was looking back on the near side for Lopez, but it goes near the out of bounds area into the corner, out of bounds. And the official on the near side will signify that it'll be a simile throw. We'll have a whistle. And it appears that there were was a, there was a ball too close to the playing area, so they'll come back and they'll throw it in again. Fifth minute of play here, Simley and North High. Allison Vogt alongside myself, Alex Westad, here in the shadows of the snowman off, side, off of Highway 36. The throw coming. Can be taken further up ahead on the Simley side for Jeffers as he's tried to send it into an open area, but there was no receiver wearing a white jersey tonight. Up high into the air. Can be taken further by O'Keefe. We'll have to work it back, looking here on the near side. They'll cut it back again further with some fancy footwork as Barrera trying to work it around, but excellent defense by the Spartans to force him off the ball. All the way into the back line, Sheffley. Sheffley will cut it back again, avoiding the pressure of O'Keefe working going to the center of the arrow for Barrowman. All the way off to the far side, they'll have to go back to get to it. And then further along now for Vandermeer. Vandermeer trying to put a ball through. Can be intercepted there briefly before taking him back again here by Simley for Jeffers. Jeffers will cut back, working onto that far sideline, pass all the way along to the far side. They'll try to center it again for Jeffers. And the ball looking intended that time for Tate Engelson goes back to the back line of the North High Polars. Can be intercepted again here by North. Near side play, a chance now for Gail Lopez. Lopez back for Barrera in the far circle. Be taken back here, goes all the way back, off to the back line here of North of Simley as they seem to run four on the back line. Goes all the way back into the North High defensive half. Can be taken again here by Alvarez who tries to send it back. Ooh, excellent move there by Jonathan Vargas. Pass further up ahead for O'Keefe. Nice little touch play there made for Esquivel who lost the handle on it. Can be taken again here by Simley. Excellent back and forth here between both of these teams. You see just how talented both of these clubs are at handling the ball and moving it well into the zone. Player taken down there, there'll be the whistle, and it'll be advantage in favor as a transgression was ruled against the Simley Spartans. Yeah, both these teams have done a really good job of handling the ball. Good crisp passes, one-touch passes. You know, they know where their teammates are, and they're using their support when they need it. Shire to take the free kick, wearing number 23, the senior. Nice line drive, looking for a through ball, trying to feed Lopez, but it comes back here to the near side where O'Keefe can play it further again. O'Keefe will watch it go out of bounds, and this will be a simile throw up coming. Ball goes all the way back into the north defensive end. Jire has it go out of bounds off his foot, and the simile Spartans able to gain more possession and continue to move the ball up the pitch. Here under the near side, where Sheffley will take the throw for the Spartans. Sheffley, one of a large number of seniors on the Simley roster. Only, if I'm doing my math correctly, only five, no, six players on the Simley Spartan roster that are not listed as seniors. This team has experience, they've been around for a while, as has been evidenced by just how strong they have been for a number of years in the Section 3A playoffs. As they looked for a call that time against Balboena, but really some nice defending back the other way. Comes here to the near side. Lopez trying to work around the defense. It goes off the foot of Ryan Ekstrom. It'll be a north throw coming. One short, short. On it. Vargas, further up ahead, Balboena. Centered it back in front. Can be gotten further now again here. Excellent intercept. So far by North as they're always right in the lane. Barrera trying to get here on the near side. Excellent sliding play made that time by Simley Sham, Sam Sheffley. As the Polars will try to work back here. Here's Vargas trying to work back here in front. They tried to feed. 
that goes off of his head that time as they try to look for Esquivel a little bit further. Vargas, ball on, trying to field it through, but unable to do so as Ben Hatcher comes out to make the save. Near side play for Simlin. Clint further up ahead. He'll get the ball back. Clint will send it back into the center for Jeffers, who resets to his back line further for now for Sheffley. Sheffley back up ahead now for Jeffers as it's intercepted again, but once again, Jeffers has the ball. Looking back here in the near side, excellent interception here by Vargas for the Polars. Vargas slowing up, trying to feed a, a through ball onto that far side. Looking further that time for Aiden Lee, but the Spartans able to defend that one out. Here to the near side. Can be gotten further this time for Sheffley. Sheffley centered in front that time for Kieran Boyden. Excellent challenge there, defended well. But the ball will go back into the polar zone. Can be taken here by Jose Alamia. And he'll slow things down. Tenth minute of play, no score. Polars and Simley. Again, the Polars 7-3 and three in their last 10 contests, contests against the Simley Spartans. They have won five of the last four and have yielded in those victories no fewer, or no more rather, than two goals in each of those contests. However, Simley won last year's matchup by a score of 3-2. to two. Shot from a far range that'll go on goal by Tate Engelson is taken by the goaltender Alamia. Further up ahead, Gail Lopez. Lopez tried to leave at that time for Esquivel. Before it can be taken back the other way, there'll be a whistle, and this will be a foul that goes against Simley. They don't like it. What thinks Allison? Yeah, it almost looked like he grabbed the Simley's player's hand and brought it up to his own eye, but I'm not really sure, I guess. Ryan Ekstrom, one of the captains for Simley, having a conversation with the official. Again, the officials, of course, so important in this process of bringing high school sports back to the state of Minnesota. So no matter where you are, if you get a chance to, make sure you thank a ref for their efforts throughout these, this game and whatever winter and spring and sprinter seasons that may soon follow. On to the back line where the Spartans can reset. They'll go back onto the far sideline where they've had more success on that far sideline than in the near side for the duration of the game so far. Through ball from a sharp angle, Esquivel trying to work his way into the box. Esquivel centering pass and a great save that time by Ben Hatcher. Working back in front and another great block off the shot that time of O'Keefe. Working back through, free ball goes out of bounds and we'll have a corner kick our first of the game. That was a great, great save by the goaltender there. And of course his defense backing him up. He made that first save, his defense was there to have his back when the rebound came out. Ismael Nogoran Barrera to take the free kick, or the corner kick rather. Again, one thing that you'll see, one of the rule modifications is that substitutions are not allowed except in case of injury on corner kicks. Again, just look at this chance here by the North High Polars. Excellent ball movement, but excellent defense and response by Simley. As we await the corner, it looked as though Gail Lopez had headed off. And that may be one of the exceptions to the rules as Barrera will take the corner kick here for North. Who's got who? Looks as, looks as though if the Polars may be short a couple of players on the turf right now. As they'll add Kenji Mua onto the field right now on the corner. They try to go working through it. It's a off the head that time of Sam Sheffley defensively, and there'll be another corner. Corner kick for the bowlers. Looks like they do have all 11, as they are allowed that substitution. 12th minute, second corner kick of the game. As Barrera will take the corner again here for North. Ball centered out in front, going for the header again. It's knocked out of the way that time by Hatcher. As we'll go back onto the far side, trying to get to it first are the Polars, where Palma can send it through dangerous into the six foot box and it can be got to again by Ben Hatcher. That was a great play. He just barely got his head on it. If he get, could have gotten it a little bit more, I think we might have saw a polar goal. Hatcher with a right footed kick. As it hits off of a couple of players, the whistle will blow. And it looks like though there'll be a timeout and the official looks to have the conversation with Andrew Jeffers. He seems to be pointing at the Simley bench. 
And then the far side of the bench looks as always explaining the, the foul. As this conversation continues here. Twelfth minute of play. No score. Polders have had two corner kicks. The Spartans have had zero so far. And again, the conversation continues. I'm not quite sure what they're discussing because I'm pretty sure it's a simile kick. As again, you take a look there at the head coach of the Polers, Dan Torres, who certainly likes the effort that he's seen out of his squad so far in this one. as it'll be a free kick here for Simley from about 60 yards out. Nice right footed kick by Sheffley there as they try to go into the area, but this will go out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick up coming here for Alamia. And Alamia, as we see so frequently, will oftentimes, goaltenders will oftentimes defer to a defensive player or any player for that matter to get the ball up the pitch as it'll be Shire to take the kick. Through the center, we take in here on a turnover by Simley. Still try to work the ball up. Excellent through ball here, looking here onto the near side for Tate Engelson. Engelson trying to work around the defense of Alvarez. Is able to do so. Nice little back foot kick that time for Sheffley before it's intercepted here by Moa here onto the near side. And a chance now for Kieran O'Keefe. O'Keefe needed to get a through ball there, but was unable to do so. And a turnover here for Simley allows them to run back the other way. Excellent footwork there by Balbuena. And now he's pushed off the ball. We're going to have a whistle, and that'll be probably as it should have been. The ball back the other way for North. Yeah, I'd say that's probably soccer's version of a cross check to the back. Vargas to take the free kick for North. Go oh, here's for O'Keefe, excellent. Job defensively for Simley. Great footwork there again by the Polars as they retake possession. An excellent read and an interception there by the captain, Andrew Jeffers. Ball through, sent further up ahead to the back line for the Polars and wisely sent out of bounds by Manny Alvarez. And we'll have a throw coming on the far side here for Simley as it'll be Zach Palmer, senior defender, who will play up in order to play. Palmer's throw into the middle of the field off of the head. O'Keefe trying to leave it further up ahead and almost was able to get to it that time was Barrera. But it goes under the near side and the through ball. They look for the offside call. Probably could have had one there. In fact, the flag is up on the far side for exactly that. As the ball goes bouncing into the visitor stand on the far side. Nobody there tonight. A nice crowd here on the near side, though. Again, a, a very chilly Minnesota September evening, 50 degrees was the official temperature at first kick. As it has been an excellent contest so far between two evenly matched teams. Free kick will be Luke Vandermeer here from the far side, or on the far sideline. Vandermeer appeared to approach, now he will. Ball sent with a ton of power back into a dangerous area for the Spartans, but the Polar is able to try to get it out. Here's Mua, Mua trying to work around the defense, but unable to do so as Sheffley tried to get it back in front that time for Charlie Geese. Comes here on the near side. Further up ahead, can be intercepted here by Barrera. Barrera all the way out of bounds. We'll see which way the flag goes. It goes the way of the Polars. As we're in the 17th minute now. Ball taken back. Tate Engelson will have to cut it back. Engelson here on the near side. Nice job holding it in that time by Sheffley. As the ball goes all the way back on the back side now for Shire. Can be taken further, Balboina. Nice defensive play that time by Simley, but a little bit too aggressive in fact, as it'll be another polar free kick. And the free kick certainly going the way of the polars too. Simley's response seems to be an aggressive style of play with just the speed and the skill that these polars are presenting. Shire's free kick. Long line drive back into the Simley defensive side. Free taken here, intercepted again. Back the other way now by Simley onto the far side as Andrew Jeffers will cut back. Ball in the middle of the pitch here for Ekstrom. Through ball onto the far side, trying to lead Zach Painter further before they'll cut it back and reset on their back line. Further now back to the far side. It can be fielded again here by Painter. 
Painter almost, but it was out of bounds onto the North St. Paul bench. Interception here by O'Keefe. The work onto the far side, trying to move it back in front. Drago back there, an excellent interception that time by Engelson. Shire will kick it back to the far side where it can be fielded further here by the Polars. And they'll work it back once again. Shire will go back to the goaltender, Alamia. Not quite enough on that as a dangerous misstep taken by the Polars as the through ball will go through. It'll be out of the back and it'll be another goal kick up coming here for North. We'll have a timeout, or a whistle anyway, as there's a player tying his shoes. It's Luke Vandermeer at the center of the field. So far, 18 minutes elapsed here. Allison, what are you seeing out of both sides? Both sides, I can tell, really know how to control the ball and that they've played together for a while. They seem to always kind of know where each other is. Um, they're having some great communication out there. You know, you can hear them yelling up here where we are in the press box. Um, so, you know, it's just a lot of control. It's a really good game right now. It doesn't seem like either team has for sure they manage. In the appropriately palatial press box here at North High School. Home of the Polars. Polars in their last contest, they were at, I believe they hosted Tartan in the 6-2-2 derby. They won that one by a final of 2-1. As they are 1-1 one one on the season. Again, all games scheduled in conference. So it'll only be Metro East opponents for the North High Polars and for every other team in the Metro East so far this year. Excellent challenge that time by Sheffley, sends the ball back here. Oh, and a great intercept that time too, as again, very physical on the ball are the Simley Sparks tonight. And they'll try to start a rush back the other way. Excellent job by Jeffers, cutting back. He'll send it off to the far side on a lead pass further for Painter. As the ball will go out of bounds, looking further up ahead there for, uh, for Charlie Geese, but too far, but held in though. And now there is the whistle and the ball will be out of bounds. So we will await the play to continue on the far side as the lights can continue to come in. Not much wind, if any at all, as the windmill on the, I want to say west end, as we're going to have another whistle here. Some conversation on the throw-in process still occurring. But there's not much wind at all. The windmill barely spinning as we'll have another north throw on the far side. Looking for O'Keefe. Nice bit of footwork there, but the Simley Spartans send it back out of bounds again. And another throw coming for the Polars. Far side, O'Keefe again. Ball can be found back into the center. Where it can be reset here again for North as we'll go back. Further now, Mitch Barrowman. We'll send it further back to the goaltender, Hatcher, as it goes all the way onto the far sideline. Again, the Simley Spartans doing a great job of stretching the pitch so far. Back right through the center of the field, even further back now for Shire. We'll take it here near side, looking for Manny Alvarez. Alvarez, pass goes off the foot that time of Joshua Clint before trying to keep it alive back in the middle of the field, right through the legs of the official. Goes all the way back into the blue line for Sheffley. Inside the 21st minute of play, no score. Polars and Spartans. Over two on corner kicks are North. Otherwise, none for Simley, and that's really been it. And there'll be a whistle there on Sheffley as he got the hand just in the way of Kenji Mua. Or no, it will go the other way. Sheffley will go back and reset. As you hear a couple of players or parents shouting, it was a penalty. And Sheffley will await. And his right footed kick has a slight arc to the left. He'll go all the way back out through the center of the field. Or can be taken further now by the Polars. There'll be another whistle and another free kick up coming for Simley. I think he pushed off the well, Simley player Spartans. to get up for that header. Kieran O'Keefe guilty of the violation there. It'll be a free kick from about 30, I'm sorry, 43 yards out. 
as it will be the senior Andrew Jeffers to take it for the Spartans. Jeffers looking for the back post, knocked out of the air that time by Almion, an excellent save, and he'll wait for the team to reset. Ball sent further up ahead, was looking for Esquivel before it can be held in further here now by the Polars as O'Keefe trying to work through a triple team, was unable to do so, and the ball can be taken here further now for Simley. Pass further up ahead, looking for Sheffley. Nice interception that time by Mua. As it can be taken further again here by the Polars, and a double team, very physical on the Spartans, but it works for them here on this rush. Not the way shortly, but a topped out ball off the foot that time of Tate Engelson goes out of play. And that will be Kobe it Polars. for that attack on a goal Kobe kick. A couple of substitutions coming in for each side as Gail Lopez will return to the game. He'll replace Kenji Mua. And on the Simley side of things, Charlie, I'm sorry, not Charlie Geese, but Kevin Warmer will enter the game as he will replace Tate Engelson on the near side. Ball further up ahead here. Can be taken by Gail Lopez. Taken here now by Simley for Ekstrom. And her pass attempted here, but it can go out of harm's way briefly, and the Polars starting to feel some pressure now on their own defensive half. Yeah, Simley's been a lot more aggressive so far in the last probably 10 minutes of this game, I would say, and it's had, it has worked out for them. They've been mostly on the Polar half, I'd say, in the last 10 minutes. Sheffley with a long throw into the six, can be taken back the other way now, and a couple of fancy footwork here is able to be smothered by Alamia, and he will start play back up the other way for North. Ball high into the air, right through the middle of the pitch. A little bit of a turnover there, is not quite able to get to it, was Painter for Simley. Through ball onto the two, on the far side, too long goes into the 18 where Hatcher can get to it. And he'll start play back the other way for Simley. Next week, we'll be at White Bear High School. It'll be a double header as the White Bear Lake Bears will be taking on the Mounds View Mustangs in a double header of action. Girls' contest will be at 5, and the boys' contest will be at 7. Back into the defensive area can be taken here now again as it'll be Painter, and there'll be a whistle. Yep. His defenseman passed it back to the goaltender. The goaltender picked it up with his hands. He can't do that. At that point, he has to play with his feet. And so they will be a whistle. Was there a card issued there as well? I did not see that. So as Allison said, again, a luxury to have an, an analyst like Allison able to know something like that. And so a conversation from the official with the goaltender Ben Hatcher explaining that he did not like the call. And so the ball currently spotted. About 20 yards out. There'll be a free kick upcoming here for the Polars. Yes, it looks like that's what it will be. You know, it's something that doesn't happen too often in games. Um, of course, unfortunately for the goaltender, it's kind of just when the ball is bouncing to you, just nature to pick it up, even if it's from your own teammate. But unfortunately, you cannot do that. Conversation on the far side between the head official and Andrew Jeffers once more. On such a free kick that is from this close, I mean, what's your strategy here? if you're head coach, Dan Torres? You know, you, his strategy might actually just be to pass it back because you're gonna see the Simley boys line up in a line in front of the goal, and you're gonna have to get that ball up and over, fat, you know, up and over them pretty quickly at a sharp angle, um, which is hard to do. As we take a look at it again here. You have to be 10 yards away. suppose that rule makes sense, too, because then you'd just be able to take advantage of the goaltender having the gloves as much as possible. Some more substitutions coming on for Simley. This will be an extended conversation yet. And meanwhile, on the other side, if you're Simley head coach Anthony Keller, what's your message defensively? 
You gotta get that wall upright. Um, you know, which a lot, a lot relies on the goaltender for that, on telling them which way to shift. And then, of course, you know, you gotta make sure you get on a body. Um, you know, after that ball's kicked, things kind of get spread out. Get on a um, a polar body. Make sure that they don't have a second chance, third chance, fourth chance at that ball. Barrera on the ball right now. It looks like they will set up for the back pass idea if they do, and it'll be Lopez who's immediately back. A little bit further back than that is Arturo, Arturo Mayo Balbuena. And so we'll see how they choose to go on the free kick. Most of Simley standing inside the six, right at the line in front of the goal. Beautiful opportunity here for the Polars as the first great chance of the game goes their way. And it is exactly that, a backward pass off the crossbar and out of play. That was a great ball. That would have just been shifted, you know, a foot to the right. We would have seen a, a polar goal right there. Now they're getting a corner kick out of it. This will be their third attempt on the corner kick again here. Another take a look, exactly like you telegraphed. Pass it back, take a great shot on, and that's exactly what Lopez did. Now on the corner, they'll choose to go here on the near side. It can be taken further, back, pass through, looking further for Vargas into the area. Unable to quite get to it, still loose in the area. The goaltender comes out to make the play as Hatcher will send it back, and it'll be a goal kick coming his way. A lot of great chances for the Polar the Polars there, you know. Simply got a little bit lucky with that post. Um, but they have did, you know, did pretty well on defense, making sure that the Polars weren't getting, you know, second, third, fourth chances. Simley now looking to restart the side, which had dis distributed so much pressure on the Polar side of the ball to all of a sudden have those breaks not go their way. It's certainly deflating for a team that had been working so well. Alamia has the ball come all the way back to the hem. A ball with a lot of backspin high into the air. Taken further here now for O'Keefe, trying to play it further ahead, but a nice challenge at time of Ekstrom to force the Polars back a little bit further before Lopez can take it here onto the near side. Lopez, a nice through ball, looking onto the far side, trying to get it further that time for Aiden Lee, but the ball goes off of a Spartan right near the out-of-bounds area. Can go all the way back further to the back line of Vandermeer before being sent further up onto the far sideline, out of bounds once again, almost into that trash can on the far side, and there'll be another throw up coming here for Simley. Here to make the throw on that far sideline, Tate Engelson, he'll throw it in. Shire will have it go off of his foot. He's able to finally get to it and make the connection. They'll see if it goes out of bounds. No, an excellent job to hold the ball in as we'll tie up right there on the out of bounds line and the flag rules in favor of the team wearing white tonight. Intercepted ball can be taken further again here by Balbuena. They'll try to cut it back here now. Balbuena has it again. Through ball looking through the center, but just had a little too much curve on it. Be taken further again here by the Spartans. Nice little tie. Goes Simley's way. As will take it back onto the far side, Aiden Lead does an excellent job defending. And he'll take the ball back. Now Lopez trying to start play back here on the near side. He'll try to go for a through ball almost. I thought he was going to for Barrera before it's intercepted that time here by Joshua Clint. Ball high into the air, goes back into the north high side of the pitch and back into the defensive side that time where Adene Palma will have to send it back further. Alvarez on the stout defensive back line again so far this year yielding only a goal and a half a game. They've only played two so far, but certainly an excellent start if you are the head coach of the Polish, Dan Torres. You certainly like what you see. Out of bounds on the Simley side of the field and it'll go for a Simley throw. Onto the far side. Be taken back here, trying to go into the corner. They'll try to move it forward before Shire can send it back out of bounds. Again here, the Polars in probably the last 10 minutes of play have spent a lot of the time in their own defensive zone as both teams are looking for that first goal of the game. Shire off of his head, off the head that time too of Balbuena before they try to intercept. Excellent job and strong footwork that time by the Spartans before they were able to clear it back out. Right through the middle of the pitch, excellent job to get a shot on, but it goes high over the top of the net. Off the foot that time of Ryan Ekstrom, and an excellent job on the pressure too that time 
from Gail Lopez to force a shot probably earlier than what Ekstrom would have wanted. Yeah, for as much uh, time that Simula has spent right now in the polar zone, the polars really haven't given them a lot of shots or a lot of chances for shots. They really have shut it down. And I think in this game, it has this feeling that's going to be a 1-0 game. Uh, I feel like that first goal is going to be ever so important. Whoever gets that lead is going to hang on to it and relinquish it. Attempted through balls taken away by Simley. Nice job of footwork there as the ball goes out of bounds. There will be a throw and upcoming here for Vargas. No, it won't be as the Spartans will yield. Goes all the way back now for Sheffley, who'll take the throw for Simley. Simley High School, Inver Grove Heights, Minnesota. If you go down on Highway 52, you'll find it there. Again, the former home of the Minnesota Vixen women's football team as well before they made their move to Kuhlman Stadium out of a dynam. Excellent stadium, an excellent school to visit. As the Polars will regain possession, they're attacking half. Lopez trying to work back through to the center of the pitch. Can be taken further here now. And a chance back the other way for Balbuena. Balbuena trying to go for a redirection off the foot there of Esquivel. And it goes out past the goal line. And another throw coming here. And a goal kick for Ben Hatcher. Hatcher sends the 10 men in front of him up the pitch as he doesn't quite get enough on that one. Goes off the head that time of Sheffley, off the head further there of Clint. Kirby goes out of bounds. You hear the frustration out of Kevin Warner that time as it goes out of bounds and a throw coming here for North. O'Keefe trying to work around the defense there of Malboina. Intercepted though nicely as the captain Jeffers able to take the ball away. Further off to the far side. And along the far sideline as they'll play almost El Rondo style. As we'll go back to the center. Misplayed that time by Ekstrom, but he's able to reset and get back to it. Further here now for Clint, who tried to spring a through ball onto the far side that time for Warmer, but it goes past out of bounds and another goal kick up coming here for North. Simley without a corner kick so far. And North St. Paul 0 for 3. No bookings, no goals. As we enter the 31st minute of play in a 40 minute opening half. And the clock does not stop in high school soccer with the exception of the last 10 minutes of the second half or after a goal is scored. As the ball goes out of bounds again on that far sideline, it'll be another North throw. Mishandled somewhat as a look to communicate here. Again, both teams not using substitutions too regularly, but the Polars will get a chance to use one here. As on the far side, Rafael Espinosa, a senior attacker, looks ready to make an appearance into the game whenever he is allowed to do so. And back onto the far sideline. There will be another simile throw. It's a ball thrown in onto the far sideline. Knocked around, out of bounds. Another simile throw up coming as the Spartans continue to work up the pitch. A little bit of a delay as they'll change who takes the throw as Sheffley will move from the right side to the far side to take the play. North High School decided this one. Allison Vogt alongside Alex Westad. No score. 33rd minute of play. It's a long throw coming and batted down by Alavia. And there'll be a whistle of foul called away from the ball. And it'll be a goal opportunity for the Polars as they try to move it. The whistle blows. And the referee signaling that the ball will have to go back. And it will. Still waiting for that substitute, Rafael Espinosa, to come on whenever he's allowed to do so. And so it'll be Alamia who will take the free kick, or rather he'll defer that time for Shire. Ball further up ahead, under the near side, looking for a through ball, trying to feed Esquivel up on the right wing, the left wing rather. Goes off the foot there of Lopez, trying to hold it in. It'll be another throw coming here for Simley. Near side, right in front of us, right at the 50, Sheffley. Looking to throw the ball in. Can be sent further onto that far side. It'll be taken here now for a chance by Manny Alvarez. Out of bounds, but not at the corner spot, but it'll be a throw up coming here for Simley. This will be a throw coming onto the far side. It'll be Sheffley to throw again. Come on, boy, get this ball. 
as this will not be a corner, but rather will be a throw. Sheffley, as the players move to the front, they try to get the header out in front. No, unable to do so. Spinning shot, what a save by Alavia. Another great save by the sophomore goaltender for the North High Polars. Yeah, just great saves, you know, diving, not afraid to, you know, kind of get in there, you know, maybe get knocked around a little bit, but that was awesome. The first major test tonight for the Polar goaltenders. He stands strong. Excellent sprawling save off the glove for one. And then it'll go out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick here. Alavia. Further up ahead. Can be taken onto the far side. Long through pass. Trying to look ahead. Shire doing a great job defensively to cut that one off. Through ball sent further, can be played by Vandermeer. We'll send it onto that far side, looking there for Jeffers. Jeffers trying to go for a through ball as he was taken down. The whistle blows and will be advantage Simley. As we hit the 36th minute of play here in the opening half. Again, if you like next week's doubleheader, the following week we have another great one for you at Matamita High School as it'll be the Matamita Zephyrs taking on the Henry Sibley Warriors in a tale of two contests. Right footed kick through traffic. Great save made that time by Alavia, who in the last couple of minutes has proved his worth to the polar side. On the near wing, can be taken further by Lopez. Nice through ball looking under the near side. The question is, is he onside? The answer, no. You can kind of tell that he Realize who's offside, try to slow up a little bit, but at that point it's too late. We will be back in North High School as well on Thursday the 17th for some more soccer action. Again, the only sport to be that can be televised via truck is that of soccer right now. Again, the high school league has not made a decision yet on any other winter sports or what a postseason tournament would look like, should there be one. As soon as you find out that information, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, as we'll delay that for a chance. Here for the Spartans as it goes back and through the box. And Shire able to recover, but it goes out of bounds. I think it went off the foot of the lead player, Clint. And this will be a goal kick upcoming. That was a great, great aggressive play. Uh, I think, like I said last week, the best thing you can do as a goalie when they're coming on you one-on-one -on -one like that is to honestly just charge them because they usually end up hitting it right into or they miss the net completely. As Olivio looks to take a chance here again, like Allison said, just great aggressive play. And then unfortunately not going the way that he wanted to was Kevin Warmer to get a good chance on it. And so either way, the Polars will take the ball back up the other side. Here under the near side. Excellent footwork that time can be taken here by Lopez, who's tried to work his way back in, but defended well again by the back line for Vandermeer. Taken further now, Vargas runs right into the Simley captain, Jeffers, and he's down. And for social media, follow us. Facebook.com slash Sports, Twitter.com SCC. You can follow us on Instagram and YouTube by the same channel or by the same metric if you'd like to. All of our broadcasts are uploaded to YouTube and you can share those with friends, family members, and anyone else who might be interested in some of the finest of North Metro television. On to the far side, goes out of bounds, trying to race for it. That time was Reed Remackle, sophomore defender, midfielder again, one of only a few underclassmen on this Simley roster. A lot of experience otherwise as the ball goes out of bounds. It'll be another throw up coming here for North with under, uh, inside of two minutes. And this is the 38th minute of play. As the Polars looking to play forward, Espinosa's ball from the far sideline is taken away here by Simley as it goes all the way back into the back side. Shire can play it. Nice footwork there to avoid the Coming on warmer, ball through a dangerous area. That time can be taken away back the other way as it goes all the way back under the back line. Pass here now once again off of Barrera. Goes back, excellent footwork again here by North as they try to keep play moving. Aiden Lee, Lee avoids a slide tackle almost before he take, gets taken down and it'll be a booking yellow as well. Yep. The yellow card comes out. 
And that'll be a yellow card issued to Tate Engelson at the 38th minute. It's a pretty easy call right there. That's the first yellow issued. As will be a free kick from about 30 yards out. Balboina to take the free kick. Again, we'll see probably a rush towards the net here with a minute and nine as the clock stops inside the first half. Balboina, left-footed kick, a little bit too far, goes all over the crossbar and not quite not quite down enough that time on the chance for the bowlers. Inside a minute here to go as we enter the 40th minute of play. In the opening half, no score. Further up ahead, Hatcher can go off of his foot and there'll be another whistle advantage simply. As he Spartans will try to rush up to get one last look here. 40 seconds now we'll have a whistle and there'll be a substitution. It'll be a red card, yep. and that will that will be the night, I believe, for the captain for Simley, Andrew Jeffers. And so what will happen is Simley will play the remainder of the game with only 10 players. And again, the conversation between Ekstrom, we've seen them, the main official have conversation with a, the Simley players frequently tonight as a red card comes out. And so 10 players will be the MO the rest of the way for Simley. And if you're the pollers, it's time to take advantage. Yeah, unfortunately, when you argue with a ref, 10 times out of 10, you're gonna lose that argument. At that point, the ref's gonna have your number the rest of the night. Long ball from Vandermeer wide to the left. The so clock will wind inside. 30 seconds remaining in this 40 minutes of play. No score. And Alamia, rather, will certainly take his time. Perhaps one last chance for the Polars. It's a line drive. Can be taken off the foot that time of Balboina. Goes all the way back. Or can be fielded again here by Francisco Ramirez. Ramirez, excellent block out in front that time by Balbuena. As the clock winds down, three seconds, two and one and zero. And that will be it as the horn should have sounded. And there it is. And that will conclude what's been a very, very active first half. And apparently a very red and yellow filled half as well. Yeah, despite there not being any goals, there has been a lot going on, a lot happening. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll recap the first half. We'll talk, talk some soccer as we go through there. Uh, this is your home for Polar Soccer on SEC Sport. Here are your AARP top tips on caregiver preparedness during coronavirus. First, form a caregiving team. Create a list of people in your family and friend network who can help with caregiving tasks. Take an inventory of supplies in your loved one's home. Try to have a two-week supply of essential items. Make a list of the care recipient's medications and medical contacts. Be sure to have prescriptions on hand and ask the pharmacist for an extra 30-day supply. Make a plan to stay connected. To prevent social isolation, set up available technology to help loved ones stay connected and schedule regular chats. Finally, maintain your own self-care. Follow the Centers for Disease Control's guidelines for coronavirus safety. And have a backup plan for care in case you become ill. For more caregiving tips during the coronavirus pandemic, go to aarp.org caregiving. You could be spreading the coronavirus without realizing you have it. So do your part and stay home. It's important to limit in-person interaction with anyone outside of your immediate household, but phone and video chat are safe ways to connect. It's also important to limit social gatherings. If you need essential items like food and medicine, try using a delivery service. If you must leave your house for essential items, or if you wanna take a walk for exercise, make sure to wear a cloth face covering. Stay at least six feet away from other people. Try not to touch frequently touch surfaces like light signals, street signs, or benches. And wash your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds as often as possible. 
This advice applies to people of any age, including teens and younger adults. It takes all of us to slow the spread of the coronavirus, so stay home unless absolutely necessary. Visit coronavirus.gov for the latest information. Kids will be kids, which just goes to say kids will be curious. They get into everything, everything. If there's a loaded firearm in the house, they could get their hands on that too. Keeping firearms locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition in a place inaccessible to kids can help keep your loved ones safe from family fire. Safe gun storage saves lives. Food, it brings us together, inspires joy, and gives us life. But we can't forget that during this crisis, over 37 million people don't have access to nutritious food. That's one in 12 seniors and one in seven children. In fact, millions of kids aren't able to receive a free or reduced price school lunch right now. The good thing is, we can all help. Learn how you can get involved at feedingamerica.org. When we help each other, we nourish ourselves, our families, and our communities. Today, as airports, stores, and streets sit empty, it's easy to feel grounded, to feel distant. But at Miracle Flights, we've been providing the cure for distance since 1985, and we've learned something from the thousands we've helped along the way. We've learned that people are resilient, that families are strong, that setbacks today become triumphs tomorrow. We've learned that we rise by lifting others and that love conquers distance every time. Hang in there, we'll soar again soon. Hello, I'm Gary Sinise. Nearly three million Americans served in Vietnam and more than 58,000 have their names inscribed on the wall. Those that pay the ultimate price in service to America. The veterans who returned home are now passing current generations know very little about the war or the people who served. As more of our Vietnam veterans pass away each day, their stories are being lost to history. It's time to remember their service and sacrifice before it's too late. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, the organization that built the wall, works to ensure the legacies of all Vietnam veterans are preserved for future generations. I'm asking you to help keep the promise the wall was built on. Never forget. Visit vvmf.org to find out how you can get involved. No score from the opening half here at North High School in the shadows of the Snowman and Highway 36 between the Simley Spartans and the North St. Paul Polars in what's been a very back and forth contest. Um, but nothing to nothing to write on the score sheet. Uh, a couple of bookings that we'll get about and talk to in a moment. Allison Volk's doing some research right now. She'll be back in just a moment. I'm Alex Westhead with you here on SEC Sports on a beautiful Tuesday evening. We have some highlights we want to show for you as it's been really the goaltenders that have done a majority off of a free kick inside the 18. Nice shot that time from Gail Lopez goes wide and out of bounds, and that was a really great chance for the Polars. Meanwhile, excellent saves on the other side as Jose Aimea, the sophomore goaltender, makes not one but two saves as a second coming on a sharp angle from the captain, Andrew Jeffers. Speaking of Andrew Jeffers, He's been ejected. A red card for the captain at the 40-minute mark of the opening half. There's also been two yellow cards issued as well. One to Engelson at the 38th minute, and another one, I believe, on that free kick that we showed you originally, but I did not see yellow go up. That's why Allison's doing some research. So that's how we stand 0-0 here at halftime. Again, we take a look at the standings here of the Metro East in the year 2020. Simley even at 2-2 two two for six points. North even at 1-1 one one for three points. Again, Henry Sibley and the Warriors top of the table. We'll see them in a couple of weeks as they have a doubleheader with the Matamidi Zephyrs. Otherwise, rounding up the bottom of the table, South St. Paul Hastings. Hill Murray near the top, as are Matamidi. St. Thomas Academy as well out of the Metro East Conference. Again, you take a look at their last year, Hill Murray best in the business at soccer in the Metro East, 7-0-1 in Metro East play. And North and Simley both tied for second, but Simley in the number two spot due to their head-to-head -head record. 
Again, Simley winning the regular season matchup last year by a final of three to two. Tomorrow on Thursday night, the St. Paul Saints are taking on the Fargo Moorhead Red Hawks at CHS Field. Tune into SEC Channel 18 for live coverage of both the games at 7 p.m. The regular season ends on Thursday night, so watch some Saints baseball while you still can. Catch all the Saints action on SEC Global. Unfortunately, the St. Paul Saints ineligible to make the playoffs as they were eliminated by virtue of a win and I believe a Chicago Dogs loss, or a, oh, I'm sorry, a loss and a Chicago Dogs win just the other day on Monday, so there'll be no postseason for the 2019 American Association champions, but always a chance for next year. We have about two minutes till the start of the second half. We'll be back in just a few moments. This is your home for Boulder Soccer on SEC Sports. Hello, I'm Gary Sinise. Nearly three million Americans served in Vietnam and more than 58,000 have their names inscribed on the wall. Those that pay the ultimate price in service to America. The veterans who returned home are now passing. Current generations know very little about the war or the people who served. As more of our Vietnam veterans pass away each day, their stories are being lost to history. It's time to remember their service and sacrifice before it's too late. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, the organization that built the wall, works to ensure the legacies of all Vietnam veterans are preserved for future generations. I'm asking you to help keep the promise the wall was built on. Never forget. Visit vvmf.org to find out how you can get involved. I'm a veteran. We hit a mine in Vietnam. When I came home, I didn't know where to turn. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. My victory's been never giving up hope. My wife is always there to remind me we have a life to live. DAV provides a lifetime of support, helping veterans of every generation get the benefits they've earned. I am a veteran, but after I got out, I spent two years alone and homeless. Every year, DAV helps more than a million veterans so they can reach victories great and small. My victory was finding the support to get back on my feet. Now I'm getting things right with my family. I finally admitted with my PTSD, I wasn't doing well. But there's more to be done and more victories to be won. Now I wish I'd found DAV sooner. I am a veteran. My victory is just enjoying each day. Help support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. The millions of people who either physically or financially do not have access to health care are staggering. Part of what makes it beautiful is people come here with just a heart to serve and a heart to make a difference. To open my eyes to these people who truly have no options and are helpless to do anything for their condition. People who have been told no their whole lives can finally be told yes. It's life changing. Start of the second half here, right, is the opening kick as we'll resume play here. No score from North High School Simley and North St. Paul as Simley will be playing with 10 the remainder of the way. There's a, well, there was a player who was down for North St. Paul, but he'll head back the other way. As it was a red card for the captain of Simley, Andrew Jeffers, and an unprovoked red too. No yellow card issued. There were two yellow cards issued in the first half, however, we only have the only one that we have for sure knowledge of is a yellow card to Engelson of the Spartans at the 38th minute of the opening half. And so play can resume with both teams. And Allison, we really saw on the, the back half of the first half, we really saw a team out of Simley that was doing a great job of pressuring North St. Paul and getting some really good chances on the attacking end. 
Yeah, they definitely were aggressive coming out. Um, you know, they were able to control a lot of the play. However, Simley did a, or not Simley, uh, the Polars, North, did a great job of making sure they actually didn't get that many shots off. Um, they did have a few good chances, uh, which the Polar goaltender came up absolutely huge in. But other than that, I mean, Polars did a great job of making sure they didn't get too many shots. Now, if you're a look at North St. Paul here and you saw what was going on at the end of that first half. Now all of a sudden, you see that the team that you're playing against, now is playing with 10 people. What do you do to manage that? How do you play against 10? On the Simley side, playing against 10, you know, it's gonna be a lot more making sure, a lot more positioning, making sure you're in, your, in the lanes, making sure you clog up, clog things up for the polar so they don't get too many good chances off. On the opposite side of things, the Polars just, I mean, they just gotta play keep away at this point. Uh, stretch out the field, um, you know, make them come to you, make them, you know, um, get out of position. So scoreless so far on the first half, North St. Paul 0 for 3 on corners. Simley did not have a corner. They did have a throw that was extremely close to it. So you may have been able to offer that up as if it was one, but no official corners on, regis on register yet. As the ball will go back into the defensive line, the Polar's now moving left to right across your television screen here in this second half of play. Again, the wind is now stopped, non-existent, no wind, so that shouldn't be much of a factor for the remainder of this half. Still very chilly. Intercepted ball goes off the knee that time. Shire with a great play, but it goes off further now where it can be taken by the back line. Excellent job there by the Polar's Palma as he'll try to play it live here again. Palma looking for a through ball here, an excellent effort by Esquivel to get there. But unfortunately for him, Luke Vandermeer able to get there first for Simley. Hatcher trying to put the ball through. Excellent leg that time by Vandermeer to send it all the way back to the far side. Ball goes further up ahead. Middle of the pitch. Pass here through ball goes off that time of Engelson as it'll go on to the far side. Out of bounds. Almost right on that line, and now it will be. And it'll be a throw coming on the Simley attacking half. Is there a sense almost that when you're playing with ten, against 10 that you might be playing back defensively a little bit? Or maybe not paying as much attention to that defensive half as one might? Yeah, I mean, on North St. Paul's side, you're going to be, you know, they, they, you've seen them, they've, do, they've been doing a lot of passing back towards their defense and kind of working the ball across the field. Um, it's just going to be a, more of a giant game of keep away. On the far side, a nice through ball went a little too far for Emiliano Esquivel. This will go out of bounds. It'll be a throw upcoming here for Simley. Both goaltenders posting clean sheets so far. Ben Hatcher, one of the captains, the senior goaltender for Simley. And Jose Alamia, the sophomore goaltender for North. They've both been excellent tonight. They'll both be tested significantly for the remainder of the contest. Vargas received a nice touch pass that time from Gail Lopez under the far side. Vargas trying to cut it back. He's able to do so slowly. Slowing back up here for, Var or for Lopez again. Lopez cutting it back. You see the players on the near side looking for a pass laterally with plenty of space here on the near side. Long through ball that time, was looking for O'Keefe. It's on goal, Hatcher able to make the save, and he'll be able to make a goal kick, or a free kick coming up, rather. Hatcher in the air, can be taken further here now in a rush this time for Barrera. Barrera, nice little touch pass onto the far side, trying to work back way. Lopez, nice spin move. Lopez working into the box, trying to center in front. Did not have O'Keefe in position. O'Keefe taken down. As the ball will go back onto the far side and the Polars will look to reset again. Here's Barrera, working back near side for Balbuena. Try to pass it further that time. That's a pass intended for Palma. Nice job of intercepting though. And now Shire can go back the other way. Nice little touch play to intercept. Shire, working up the pitch, Gail Lopez. Lopez, looked like he lost his footing a little bit there, trying to work around the defense. The whistle blows, advantage Simley. <laughs> 46th minute of play, 
no score. Simley and North St. Paul. It'll be a free kick up coming here for Luke Vandermeer. Has the ball sent high to the north side of play. Back as it's intercepted here this time by Rimackle. Ooh, and a nice chance that time for the Spartans. Unsuccessful and a goal kick up coming. It's kind of a breakdown of defense there, I think, a little bit for North. Uh, all of a sudden, he was just kind of in no man's land and had a chance. But a great shot. Because Mackle just, you see that little bit of a curve on that ball that developed as a result in the late, later stages of the play. But the ball will go back into the back line for North where Shire can play it again. Shire, nice drive. Back into the Simley side of the pitch. Vandermeer will go back to play. And further now, we're actually be the goaltender Hatcher to make the play. Hatcher sent it onto the near side, back through to center. Can be taken further now. There's a time here that time. Shire does a great job of providing that outlet pass here from Balboina. All the way into the far side where it can be taken further again for Alvarez. To look under the far wing right inside in front of the polar bench. Gotten further here again. We'll try to work through. Through ball all the way back. Ekstrom lost the handle on it. A chance now for the polars taken down. The whistle will not blow as that looked like a clean challenge from up here in the broadcast booth. Can we take in that time off the foot there of Vargas? This will go out of bounds. No, it'll stay in. Now a challenge there. It'll be another free kick coming for North. One thing that we noticed about the style of play of the Simley Spartans, again, playing with 10 men, as you see there on the screen, a ball into the area was able to be gotten to again by the goaltender, Hatcher. You notice just how aggressive on the ball they were, especially with 11, but even more so now with 10 to try to create those turnovers. Yeah, you kind of have to be. I mean, you have to be able to, you know, get an advantage in some way. Some Part of that's going to be being aggressive. I love seeing soccer players play aggressively. Um, I think it's super effective, but of course, you also run the risk, too, of getting uh, free kicks against and maybe even some red and yellow cards as we've seen here tonight. Great interception by Balbuena. Two yellow cards have been issued, one red card. Again, you see Assembly playing with 10. As a captain, number nine, Andrew Jeffers, was excused from the duties of the game tonight. And so Simley playing with 10 for the duration of this second half. Palma had it back in center for Balbuena onto the far sideline where it could be played further now for Alvarez. Tried to lead pass further there for Barrera. As now they'll send a re-back and continue to work on that far side. Simley appearing to spread out, defending fairly well. As Barrera working back into the center, taken away from the ball. Nice challenge that time by the Polish to slow the clearing attempt. Great interception there by, by, by Balbuena. Barrera working here under the near side for Palma. Can be sent further that time for Aiden Lee. Back for Palma again, who spins center of the pitch for Balbuena and all the way back into the defensive side here as we've reached the 50th minute of play. In this contest, no score. As the ball will go back out of bounds. And it will be a throw up coming. And again, one of the advantages, too, to playing with 10 men is that there's been a dominant pace and a dominant feel in the style of play where North has had a lot of play on the Simley half here in the second half. Yes, they have, but uh, Simley's done a really good job of making sure, actually, of kind of clogging up the middle there and uh, kind of forcing Simley to force some, or forcing North to force some plays. Um, there have been a couple of times where it seems like the, they get, that North gets a little bit of impatient and starts, you know, just kind of kicking it up the middle. Um, if they can keep their patience a little bit longer, I think they can maybe draw them out of position. And a lot of inexperience at the varsity level for the North High Polar is only five players returning from last year's roster to this on the varsity side of things. So a lot of new talent, a lot of young talent making an impact here on the season for the North High Polars. As that ball out of bounds, it'll be a throw up coming for Simley. As it can be taken further now by Engelson. Engelson looking for a throw. Ball went further up ahead here. Was able to find Warmer. Warmer has it go off of his leg, but it'll be a throw as it went off one of the polers instead. 
And another throw up coming here for Engelson. Engelson works on the near sideline. The pass further up ahead, headed by Shira. Can be taken further along now. Almost through. The tie up once again here. Great interception here by Simley. As a work onto the far sideline that time for Remackle. Remackle, who had a great chance for Simley early in the second half. A nice through leg pass for Shire there. Great ball movement here from Palma. As they'll move it further up ahead, a good through ball. They'll have to stay on side though. Barrera onto the far side as Lopez. Working through the defense, trying to get back through. Another ball through into a dangerous area is sent out of play. With a nice defensive effort from Sheffley on the right side. And it'll go out of bounds and it'll be another throw up coming for the Polars. As you see right where the throw in area upcoming, you see that the North substitutes trying their best to stay warm. And as the temperature drops, more of a mental game as well in soccer, especially those in goal or on the sideline. Through ball on goal can be saved that time by Ben Hatcher. Hatcher to keep play continuing here for Simley. Nice ball high over the head. Can be played further along now. Vargas will send it back into the Simley half before it can get further again. As will tie up on the north high side. Barrera trying to go on a through ball, but unable to get through cleanly as it goes back now, back to the center. We're playing it further once again now. Rafael Espinosa left it further for Vargas. As will go right into that Simley back line onto the far side. We're going to be spend further up ahead onto the near side. As those passes trying to break through the Simley zone have just been a little bit off. What a We'll play to take advantage of there. A little bit of extracurricular will be an advantage in favor of Simley. Yeah, another pretty easy call on that one. Vandermeer. Look to take the kick here. A little bit of extra contact behind the play with Shire and Warmer going at it. But nothing out of the realm of illegality. Cutting back, Shire to play it again. His back line for North has been so stout tonight. And the same can be said too on the other side for Simley. Excellent defensive lines for both of these teams. As we get a chance almost to witness it there and a great defensive play, but the Polar's able to keep play alive. Better play made before it's kicked out of bounds. That time on a great effort by the defense of Francisco Ramirez playing out of the midfield position. Excellent job to take the ball away that time by Aiden Lee. As he'll center back in front for Balbuena. Balbuena will play catch with one of the polars, Alvarez, right in the center. Before the Spartans can take back over, they'll cut it back. A chance now trying to keep play alive. It'll go back into the far side further that time. As extra. On the far side, turns the ball over. Barrera, oh, an excellent move to get around traffic. Barrera from a sharp angle, easy save that time for Ben Hatcher as he'll make a leap and make that save. Hatcher sending the ball out of his own zone. Engstrom able to make the header play. So trying to go back on the further side. A race to the ball is defended well. Excellently, in fact, by the combination of Alvarez and Shire, who collapsed on the ball and were able to send that out of harm's way, giving the Polars a chance to reset as the ball goes back onto the far side. Lopez further up ahead for Barrera, race to the ball. Excellent tackle made by Simley as they're able to regain possession. Here's Hatcher. He'll send the ball back onto the far side, looking further for Ekstrom. Ekstrom. Moves the ball into the center of the pitch where can be fielded here by Engelson. Nice job to take that one away, though, as the Polars will take it back the other way. As Balboina will send it back here for Shire. Shire for the foot of Aiden Lee. Lee trying to spring a through ball that time, was looking for the foot of Espinosa. 
as the ball will go back here onto the near side. It can be sent further up ahead, off the foot there, and a nice play at that of Palma. As we'll go back again here, center of the pitch for Balboina. Further, we'll try to continue to move around. Palma, intercepted pass here, gotten further up ahead now for Aiden Lee. Onto the far side, trying to work around now is Esquivel. Esquivel will cut back, looking for Lee further. Great footwork there. Lee into the center, was looking that time for Espinosa as the ball will actually stay in bounds off the curvature of the turf. Esquivel fighting for possession. Excellent use of the body there. Espinosa tries to center in front. Not quite enough, though, as the Spartans able to defend. They'll send the ball out of bounds, and it'll be a throw up coming here as we enter the 57th minute of play. No score. Again, if you joined us late, no overtime in high school soccer this year. One of the modifications to the rules of play this season. So no overtime. If it ends 0-0, that's how it'll stay. Otherwise, the big story of the game is a number of bookings. Two yellows, one red. The red going to Andrew Jeffers, the captain for Simley as Simley has been playing with 10 men since the late stages, I believe the 40th minute of the opening half of play. Palma, cross pitch pass, sent further here for Alvarez. Alvarez try to go through a through a ball, but excellent interception that time by Ekstrom as he'll send it back again. And you see really how Simley is trying to feed Kevin Warmer as he's playing that role of striker now with the, the lead striker, Andrew Jeffers, out. Ball to the near side. Palma sent further here. Can be taken further along now. Great challenge there. And they'll actually blow the whistle though. And there'll be a substitution onto the far sideline for Simley. As it'll be three substitutes coming on as Ramirez, Warmer, and Remackle will be off. And coming back on appears as though a number of junior varsity players as number 23 has entered field of play. Charlie Geese returns as well as Kieran Boyden for the Simley Spartans. And Kenji Mua will return to the field as well. The throw here, Palma. Got it further for Balboina who sends it across the Pitch further here now for Vargas. Vargas trying to work onto the far sideline where it can be gotten further for Lopez. Lopez trying to work his way back through the center before he's denied by the Spartans. Comes all the way back now here and a chance for Palma. Palma working on the near side. Great footwork and body positioning by Mua. Excellent job to work through traffic trying to create a redirection play in front. But it goes past the goal line and another great chance for the North High Polars. That's some great footwork there to uh, get around two defenders and if one of his uh, teammates had just been a little bit farther up, I think we would have saw Polar's goal. Goal kick here, can be taken by Hatcher. Off the foot of Balbuena as the Polar is looking to break the 0-0 tie. Off to the far side looking for Lopez. Oh, a nice through ball attempted there. Vargas does a great job to hold it in. Vargas trying to cut back. Has it go off of his foot. He continues to apply pressure as the ball goes out right onto the corner flag. And the goal kick has been ruled. So Hatcher will get another chance at the goal kick. Goal kick, Spartans. As Hatcher. Will give way this time for Vandermeer. We've seen how strong his leg is, and he fields a line drive this time. It's intercepted further. Great job by Barrera. Through ball. Looking that time for Espinosa, but too far past him. It goes out of bounds. And there'll be another throw up coming onto that far sideline for North. As we've hit the 61st minute of play, no score between Simley and North St. Paul. North High winners of five of the last, or four of the last five contests between seven of the last ten. However, Simley won last year's contest by a score of three to two. We have a whistle onto the far sideline, and the official has a conversation with the coach Dan Torres as he is awaiting word as it'll be a Simley throw here. As play will continue here. 
on to the far side. Nice little touch pass that time from Boyden onto the far side where it can be taken all the way back through. Nice through ball there attempted by Ekstrom, whistle blows. And it'll be a free kick here for Simley. Or a drop ball rather. Ekstrom. Long drive looking on the far side. Excellent header that time made by Alvarez. It goes back onto the far side where Lopez can try to make something happen. Lopez, excellent through ball. It'll be a race two at that time, but it's won by the experience of the senior Engelson as, as the goaltender Hatcher will come out to make the play. Really, out of the defense of Simley, an excellent job by Engelson to cut off the angle to the goaltender. Off of Shire, onto the near side. Palma doing an excellent job to hold the line. Can be centered further once again here for Balbuena. Onto the far side. Vargas, off the foot at that time of Aiden Lee. Shire, all the way back. As it goes on, Jose Alamia. And again, the bowlers starting to run out of time with which to work. One on one on the season. Simley Spartans were two and two entering play today. As we're going to have a whistle away from the ball, and it'll be a north free kick. It'll be Shire to come up to play it. North St. Paul a season ago, 8-6-1, the number five seed out of section 4 double A. They lost to Stillwater 2-1 in the section quarterfinals. Their next contest will be coming up on Thursday as Shire's kick is headed out of arm's way further up ahead near. Now a chance and for the unnamed number 23. An excellent job that time on the back line by Alvarez to take the ball away. Through ball, chance here now. Looking for Espinosa, shot on goal. Great sliding, sprawling save by Ben Hatcher of the Spartans. Yeah, I don't think uh, the Polish player got quite as much as, she, as he wanted on that, on that, but it was a great save nonetheless by Ben Hatcher. Ball onto the far side. Vargas will send it back further for Alvarez. That's Balboina once again. Into the middle for, Ke for Aiden Lee. Lee will hold the ball. It'll go back to Shire, who will reset the play. One of the captains for North High School. Ball goes off of a couple of Spartans before it can be reset to that back line. Boyden lost the handle on it. And a chance now as Lee tries to break through. Lee with a chance for the Polars. Lee working in. Oh, and the ball's loose, but it's smothered on the back play by Ben Hatcher. More aggressive play by the goalies here, and I love to see it. Um, Lee looked like he was just going to uh, kind of bulldoze through everyone on that one. Again, working right through like a hot knife through butter, the Simley defense. Aiden Lee with a great chance, but even better save by Ben Hatcher to take that chance away. As we've hit the 64th minute of play, as the ball goes back into the far sideline, catching up on that last point, North will host Hill Murray, the Pioneers, on Thursday, the 10th of September here at North Stadium. Meanwhile, for the Simley Spartans on the other side of things, they will take to the turf next as we'll await this play here. Mua trying another through ball. They've been excellent on these so far. Palma looking from a sharp angle, tried to center in front, but can be taken further now and a chance. Oh, and almost again. An excellent chance for Espinosa. Starting to be a little bit of cracks in Simley's defense here. Um, I don't know if it's because they're getting a little bit more tired, um, but North is definitely putting on a lot more pressure right now. Simley will play host to Henry Sibley on Thursday. That game coming at 5 p.m. Another corner, 0 for 3 so far. Chance in front, headed out of harm's way and can be taken here again by Simley. Nice intercepted play though. As the bowlers continue to apply pressure onto the near side, and it should be another north, north throw coming in. But the bowlers have had their chances here in the second half. It'll be a simile throw, rather, here on the near side. As Engelson 
We'll work it back to the defense of Vandermeer. Further up ahead now, Vargas off the foot of Lopez, back for Vargas again on the far side. Taken here, through ball. Chance now for Espinosa, shot goes wide as it goes out of bounds. And it looked like it went off one of the Simley players and will be another corner here for North. Corner kick for the Polars once again, taken by number eight, Ishmael McLaurin Barrera. Barrera will take it. The fifth corner of the game, second of the second half here for North. This is Barrera's kick. Line drive headed excellently by Engelson. Shire back for Lopez as he'll try to send it through. Shire can take it again. Shire, great job moving around the defenders before the ball comes back here on the near side, trying to take it away, but a great challenge that time by Palma. Middle of the pitch, Vargas works it back here onto the near side for Palma. Palma working near side. Looking back for Mua. Mua tried to spring Rafael Espinosa near side, but the ball will go out of bounds. It'll be a simile throw. We're going to have a whistle as well as a substitution will be made. As number 23 will be replaced by number 19, Kevin Warmer. Back in for the Spartans, number 19, Kevin Warmer. As Warmer, one of the juniors for the Spartans. They'll look to feed him up ahead, but Shire, excellent defensively, will keep the body away. And excellent support as well by Manny Alvarez. On to the far side. Can we take him further? We'll tie behind play. A little pass in front, looking for Warmer. Intercepted here by Shire for the Polars as he'll look to start a rush. Great ball up ahead, Barrera with an advantage here. Another through ball looking for Mu on the far side, but unfortunately for the Polars, it's right at the goaltender, Hatcher as he'll send it further along. Now the Spartans looking to work back the other way. Intercepted ball right through the legs that time of Engelson off the feet of Barrera. Barrera working back. The attempted tackle and challenge works well for the Spartans as they'll look to start back the other way, cutting back. Painter trying to tap with the ball, but a great job by the Polars to try to take it away. The whistle will blow and it'll be advantage Simley. The throw coming in the 69th minute of play. As the ball will be a free kick, rather, not a throw on that far side. As the Spartans look to push up the pitch. Long ball off of that chance there from Warmer in the area. Nice job by Shire to push it back out. As Warmer goes back to try to play, it'll be out of bounds, it'll be another Simley throw. And if you're the Spartans, you want to be able to take advantage of an opportunity like this down by one player. Yeah, this is something you definitely take advantage of. Um, you know, this is a time when, you know, you got to put in a goal right here and then you can defend the rest of the way. Sam Sheffley will attempt the throw in here, looking from some for some direction from his coach, Anthony Keller. We'll have a whistle, the clock will stop. And the official will go ahead and make a conversation. Again, we've seen on the back end the battling between Warmer for the Spartans and Shire for the Polars. An extended conversation between the two again. As we'll have a throw coming from about 35 yards out. It's a throw. Looking back into the area. Can we take it here further in a dangerous spot? They'll try to work around. Oh, what a shot! And they'll look to see if it's a corner. No, it's a goal kick. And a great chance there from Joshua Clint in front goes wide for the Spartans. That goal post has seen a lot tonight. And again, very reminiscent of the first half chance for the Polars where the goal post makes the save. Actually, I think the goaltender got his hands on it. Now a chance back the other way for Simley, a ball off the foot that time of Boyden. I'm sorry, not Boyden, Geese rather. We'll go out and it'll be another goal kick up coming here for Alamia. So we've hit the 70th minute of play, no score again. Ball high into the air, can be fielded further up along now or can be taken back at center. 
all the way back. An excellent battle here between Balbuena and Warmer, and it's won that time by Warmer as it'll go for a free kick here for Simley. We've mentioned before our next broadcast will be a doubleheader of boys and girls soccer from White Bear Stadium as the Bears take on the Mountview Mustangs in the TCO Sports Center Derby. Kick through as it goes into the area, can be taken further back out. Now a long ball intended for a redirection. There are Simley fans and the players are looking for a handball, but they won't get it. As the ball goes further up ahead now, and a chance for Val Buena onto the far side. Lopez trying to work back around. We'll send it all the way back to the defense of Alvarez. And had there been a handball there, that probably would have been a penalty as it looked as though the player Palma was in the area. Palma. Working back here, center of the pitch for Val Buena. As he'll try to send it further up ahead for Barrera. Looking here on the near side for Kenji Mua. Not quite strong enough on that, but can be cut back. We're on to the far sideline. Simley's Lopez had to go past where the North High Polar Lopez can play. On to the near side, Mua. Sends it back for Palma as they'll look to reset. Centered it on the pitch for Balbuena. Balbuena onto the far side. Further for Alvarez on the back line. Alvarez has the puck and the, the ball intercepted. As it goes all the way back into the far side, it will go onto the far wing off of, looked like Alvarez and Warmer. Very, very strong on that ball to force the throw here upcoming for Simley. Simley's pushing back a lot right now. North uh, seems to be kind of on their heels a little bit. Sheffley with the ball in front of his own bench. Perhaps showing the underclassmen how to throw the ball in. He does exactly that, headed by Shire. As it'll go right on the out-of-bounds line before it can be taken here by Lopez on the far side. You see Shire ushering him to move up the field, trying to get through traffic. The ball, excellent job, almost to hold the ball in, but it will go out-of-bounds. Will be a throw coming for Simley. And again, they've started to get some chances and some breaks going their way. Ends of the throw right about midfield. Sheffley looking for Warmer. Looked as though he was taken down. He'll get a whistle here. And it'll be a free kick coming for Simley. And again, Warmer having conversations with the North High players. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that. There's a little bit of retaliation there um, on Simley's part. And so it'll be a free kick from about 25 yards out. Probably the best chance that Simley's going to get the rest of the way. It'll be Engelson to take it. Far side, right-footed kick through into the area. They score! Spartans on the scoreboard, down 10 off the free kick chance from Tate Engelson. One to nothing, Simley takes the lead. It almost looks like, looks like they drew up that play. That was perfectly executed. Just a good, uh, good hard kick off to the side and then just a one touch into the net. Not much to goal. The goal, keep could do him on that. Certainly chaos into the area. I have to take another look to see if any Spartan got a clear foot on it. If not, the goal will belong to Engelson. And so Simley down to Four 10 more. men, Simley, able 10 to get here. on the scoreboard. They lead one to nothing here at the 74th minute of play as the goal credited to Kieran Boyden over the public address announcer, James Huss. Thank you for that. As Boyden gets on the scoreboard for the Spartans as they take the 1-0 advantage here with just six minutes to play in the 74th minute. There'll be a throw coming for Simley on the near sideline. As it can be taken here further. It's exactly as Allison mentioned as the ball goes into the stands. Score a goal on a free kick and then play defense. It's exactly what Simley will try to do here. As you look over the crowd here at North High Stadium. Shire 
Working here on the near side. Ball held in. Oh, what a touch pass, but not quite enough as it does go out of bounds. And it'll be another throw coming on the near sideline for Simley. Yeah, the best thing that Simley can do right now is just kind of take their time, run down the clock a little bit on these throw-ins, any, any goal kicks they might have. Ball blasted back into the defensive half. Kevin taken here now by Jonathan Vargas. Out of the near side for Adonai Palma. Palma looked for Kenji Mua near side, but was unable to find him cleanly. And another throw upcoming, and each throw that Simley is able to get, that's more time off the clock that they can certainly wind. Another throw here. Shire, and they will blow the whistle, as I believe that was not a legal throw. And the conversation you hear from the official there. And the throw will come here, midfield, Palma. Looking further here for Balbuena. 76th minute of play. One to nothing, Simley takes the lead. At the 74th minute, a Kieran Boyden goal off of a free kick from about 25 yards out and a redirection in front. That's what's given Simley the one nil advantage. Ball can be sent back onto the far line. Shira, Shire rather, puts it back here for Aiden Lee. Lee tried to send a through ball, but unfortunately was unable to get it. Off to the far side. Vargas looking for Lopez on the far wing. Lopez with some fancy footwork trying to work his way back through the middle. Nice little touch pass there. Tried to get it for Lopez, but unable to field it cleanly. And Simley able to send it the length of the field. It'll go back to the center here in the 77th minute of play. Lopez will cut it back for Alvarez once again as he'll look to reset. The goaltender, Alamia. Playing up, we'll see him go aggressively towards the box as we near the end of regulation time. Palma trying to work back his way through center. Again, a lot of this middle of the field stuff where the Polars have not been able to crack through that back line with many chances tonight. Trying to work their way through again. Vorjek is effective there and will go out of bounds in a throw from about 15 yards out on the far side here for North. In play, ball was, from out. There's a second there. And there's going to be a whistle there. There was a second soccer ball on the field that never got taken off. And good awareness once again by Allison Vogt. As a ball, we'll go all the way back. There'll be another throw in. It's the moment in which, in these situations, the clock should stop, I believe. Yep. It'll be a drop ball here. For Simley, as they'll send it the length. Warmer and Shire have had a great battle all night on the back line. Ball can be intercepted here once again. It's taken further here now. Chance now for Barrera. Palma near side. Palma looking for Mua. Mua able to get to the ball. Oh, excellent job to pull it back. Mua trying to work around the defense of Engelson before being forced back to go further for Barrera. Back onto the far side. Chance now for Lopez. Lopez trying to work his way back onto the far side, looking for Barrera again, headed that time. And a nice read by Vandermeer as we'll go back into the corner. Simley will try to send it back out. They're able to do so, but Lopez able to get to it for the pullers. Lopez trying to work through. It'll get through it now, Barrera. Barrera working back. We'll send it here onto the near side for Palma. Palma trying to work around the double team, able to do so. Can be gotten here further now for Vargas. Vargas back in the front, excellent foot in the lane, able to send it back to Shire as the Spartans defending well. Shire from a long ways out goes wide to the right. And if I'm north, I'm not sure why we're taking that shot. To be honest though, a little bit to the left, and I think he has a goal up and over the goal, the keeper there. Um, I, I kind of feel like also too why not if you have that good of a leg and you know you you have confidence to boot the ball Vandermeer will kick the ball out as the goal scorer Boyden 
is substituted down for more defense here. Again, Simley playing with 10 men for the entirety of the second half. Scored a late goal off the foot of Boyden. That's given them the 1-0 score here, which in the 80th minute of play may be enough to put them on top tonight. As the two teams battled for the top of the table a season ago, and it looks as though they may do the same again here. Excellent read that time. Sent back down the length of the field. It can be taken here by Alamia, who was able to get to it for North. 36 seconds remaining. Alamia trying to send it back further. Shire up ahead as the ball goes into the box. Good challenge that time, though, to temporarily delay the Simley exit from their defensive half as the ball goes out of bounds. 24 seconds and counting remaining. A quick throw in. Lopez trying to work his way back in. Lopez cutting back onto the far side. Try to get it back further before it's taken once again here by Malbuena. Shot from a sharp <laughs> angle. Goes wide to the right. Out of bounds. A goal kick. And that should just about do it as the clock continues to wind down inside two seconds. And it will be a thriller here from North High Stadium as with 10 men in the second half, the Simley Spartans win by a final of one to nothing. And what a contest on the back half of things. Yeah, that was a really incredible game. Both these teams are very evenly matched. And did I not say I had a feel of a 1-0 game? As Allison is so frequently, she is always right. One to nothing the final. It was a goal at the 74th minute by the senior Kieran Boyden that gave them the one to nothing advantage in a second half for which Simley had 10 players for the duration of it thanks to the red card by Andrew Jeffers in the 40th minute of the first half. That would be enough though as North just not quite able to get that final rush through the back line and put the ball in the back of the net. But they had so many chances tonight to be able to do so. Yeah, they did have a lot of chances, especially in the first half of some of those free kicks. And the, they had how many corner kicks? Four or five of them. Um, they had their chances to put the ball away, but they did not tonight. And Simley did capitalize on one of their few chances that they did have. So with the victory tonight, Simley will improve to 3-2-0 and two and oh on the season. And meanwhile, on the other side of the schedule for North St. Paul, they will fall to 1-2 and two on the season. They do have a contest against Matamida in which to make up, which was postponed last Thursday. So they do have an extra contest which yet to make up. For all of us here at SCC Sports, the final score tonight, again, Simley 1, North High 0. This is your home for polar soccer on SEC Sports. We'll see you on Tuesday as the Bears face off against the Moundsview Mustangs.